Dry Battery Electrode Technology, or DBE, is an interesting new battery manufacturing technique. The current mass production of commercial cells is done using a wet slurry process, most commonly using a solvent called N-methylpyrrolidone, or NMP. This allows the binder materials used to be fully dissolved and create strong adhesion between the active materials and the current collectors. The reason DBE has become of significant interest is because by foregoing the use of solvents, a huge energy savings can be realized, in addition to a large process time saving. In a study by Ahmed et al. at Argonne National Lab, listed in the description below, the researchers determined that it takes approximately 42 kilowatt hours of energy per kilowatt hour of batteries produced to evaporate the solvent used in the wet process. In addition, a large amount of complex capital equipment is required to achieve a safe removal of the NMP, such as air heaters, heat exchangers, chillers, condensers, and recovery processing units. The greatest source of energy in the process is due to the large amount of air transfer required to keep the proportion of solvent in the air below the flammability limit. In total, it was estimated this process accounts for about 3% of the entire battery pack level cost. And this is just the cathode side. So it would likely be a similar cost for the anode, bringing the total cost to 6% at the pack level. Not having to perform this task of solvent evaporation would save manufacturers a huge amount of resources. To address these issues, researchers and industry have been experimenting with methods to effectively adhere the active battery materials to the current collector without dissolving a binder with a solvent. The most common top-level approach is to use binder materials such as polyvinylidene fluoride or PVDF and perform a dry mixing method with the active materials. In the cathode, this could be lithium nickel manganese cobalt, or NMC, and carbon black, for example. And in the anode, this could be graphite and carbon black. Then this dry mix is either dry sprayed onto the current collector, or done using an electrostatic dry powder coating process. The electrostatic spray method works by positively charging the material particles as they leave a spray gun and applying a ground or opposite polarity to the current collector for an electromagnetic attraction to occur. The key step after the active material is laid onto the current collector is pressing the material mix onto it with heated rollers. The rollers themselves are heated to a temperature which nearly melts the binder to achieve adhesion of the materials to the current collector. The fundamental difference between the dry electrode process and the wet slurry electrode is in how the binder is activated to perform its job. In the wet slurry, the binder is dissolved chemically into the solvent, and then the active battery materials are added. This is done at standard room temperatures usually. But in the dry electrode process, heat is used to activate the binder to adhere the active materials to the current collector. So why wasn't the dry process done from the beginning of making batteries instead of the wet slurry process? The challenges lie in achieving the same levels of adhesion and other aspects of cell performance in the dry version as the wet version. The NMP solvent was found to do a great job of fully dissolving the binder and creating a strong and lasting adhesion to the current collector. Another challenge with the dry method is preventing degradation of the binder material when it's heated to near the melting point to activate adhesion. Striking the right balance for the temperature for heating the binder is crucial, as too hot a temperature will cause the electrode to lose porosity, which will hurt performance. There are several studies which go into these details. In one study by Al Shrufi et al. at the University of Kentucky, Researchers made an NMC cathode using a dry coating process. The method of fabrication they used to apply the dry active materials 
was electrostatic dry powder coating followed by preheating the electrode to 170 celsius and then running through calendaring rollers the study used half cells which allow the performance characterization of only half the battery which is the cathode in this case in the half cells they found a specific capacity of 155 milliamp hour per gram which is within the range of commercially produced NMC batteries of 150 to 200 milliamp hour per gram. They cycled the cells and found a decent capacity retention of 80% for more than 300 cycles. Two control electrodes were made using a wet process using two different loading densities and being careful to keep the other variables consistent between the wet and the dry. Surprisingly, the dry electrode actually maintained a higher capacity at 80% compared to the two wet electrodes at 60 and 65%. This was from the data of 20 coin cells, so it was not an isolated occurrence. One key drawback in performance for the dry electrode was that at high C rates above 5C, a significant capacity reduction was seen compared with the wet electrode. This can be seen by the three red dots for the dry electrode at 10C having a capacity of only 20 milliamp hour per gram. Another interesting aspect of this study is the scanning electron microscope images, or SEM images, which show the difference in crack propagation after cycling in the wet versus dry. The authors comment that for the dry electrode in A and B, the cracks appear at the NMC grain boundaries, but for the wet electrode, the cracks appear to be throughout both the NMC particles and in the carbon black and binder. You can see the dry images up top and the wet images on the bottom appear different altogether. And it may have been that slightly different contrast and brightness settings were used to focus on each one of the inherent challenges of using SEM to characterize materials. Overall, this study suggests the ability of dry electrodes to have similar performance over 300 cycles to wet electrodes. One aspect I wonder is how these would perform when cycled, say, 800 to 1000 cycles, as current NMC wet electrodes are able to achieve. The other point here is that commercially produced NMC wet cathodes are able to achieve 80% capacity retention for well over 500 cycles using performance enhancers such as electrolyte additives, of which some of these were used here, but it was not a focus of the study. In a real world application and judging from this study, there still needs to be a lot of work done in adhesion and longevity to get the performance of dry battery electrodes to meet the current performance of equivalent wet electrodes. In another study by Park et al. at the German Aerospace Center, researchers made lithium titanate or LTO batteries with a dry electrode process. Instead of using an electrostatic application method as in the previous study, they used a dry spraying method after thoroughly mixing all the materials. And in this case, the slight difference of a hot press was used instead of preheating and then passing the electrode through rollers. A higher temperature of 175 Celsius was used, very close to the 177 Celsius melting point of PVDF. The variable of interest in this case was the amount of time the electrode was pressed. The researchers tried four different times of 30, 45, 60, and 90 minutes in the hot press. The study goes into depth to explain why the 60 minute time resulted in the optimal performance. At a top level, this is because the 60 minute time resulted in the optimal amount of PVDF binder melting to form strong adhesion to the current collector and cohesion between neighboring active materials, but not too much to result in recrystallization of the binder and poor electrical conductivity. One important note for this study was that a wet electrode with the same material parameters was not made for a comparison, 
which would have been useful. But the purpose of the study was to investigate how differences in heat treatments of a dry battery electrode affect performance. The specific capacity for the 60-minute case started out at 120 mAh per gram and after 100 cycles only retained 69% capacity, which for LTO chemistry is very low, as they are the one of the most durable and long-lasting cell types. However, the authors note that this is due to micron-sized LTO particles being used and that this performance is actually better than wet slurry micron-sized LTO performance. Overall, this was a useful study to learn how to optimize adhesion and performance of a dry battery electrode through changing the time it's exposed to heat. These are just a few of the key challenges associated with DBE, and there is much more research to be done. Due to the possibility of great savings in the manufacturing process, it's likely we'll see DBE being used more and more as the process is improved.